and welcome back to Shortcuts. I'm your host, Adam Dudley, and today we're going to discuss visualizing vulnerability data. And this is a special topic and an exciting one because our guest's recent contributions in this arena have been hugely popular with the security community on LinkedIn and elsewhere. So he's a cybersecurity researcher and business leader known for his former role at Dua Security, not to mention his bowler hat and his vast collection of skateboards, some of which you can see behind him. But please welcome first-time guest Patrick Garrity from Nucleus. Welcome, Patrick. Hey, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. I love to talk about some of my experiences, so it's great. All right. Excited to have you. So before we dive in, can you give us a quick take? on how you got into security research and vulnerability data visualization. Flash animations were a, a really fun thing um, back in like the 90s. Yeah. Uh, and so I think a, a little bit of aspect of, you know, inspiration on like both fixing computers and dealing with viruses when I had a computer store mm -hmm. uh, kind of was the infancy of like, you know, getting into the security uh, piece of things. And then at Duo Security, I joined in 2012. That was the first like pure play security company. And I was the 12th, 12th employee. And we were one of the first cloud services. And one of the challenges was conveying how our service worked because it was so foreign that people mm -hmm. would be using a cloud service, especially for a security tool. Uh, so, so what I found was like, hey, we need to address this objection in a way that people can understand without reading mm -hmm. a a 20 page manual or instructions sure. on how to, how to implement. Um, and what that, what that led me to do was essentially create a network diagram. Uh, and if you go to duo uh, manual pages today on their website, mm -hmm. you'll find a network diagram at the bottom of every page. And that, that really was like my initial introduction into uh, kind of visualizing something from a mm -hmm. technical perspective and helping people, uh, really be able to understand something and comprehend something that is rather new and, and a lot of times perceived as complex. I have to spend a lot of time in understanding written things. Mm -hmm. And so these visualizations are helpful for, you know, people like myself that maybe have different um, uh, comprehension uh, levels. And so, I, yeah, I think a, a picture is worth a thousand, thousand words, certainly, in helping convey things and ways and, and offering different ways for people to consume. Um, more recently, you've been working on creating uh, visualizations specifically on Vuln research and, and specific CVEs, especially um, coming from things like the CISA CAV list, which we uh, all know and love here at Nucleus. So uh, could you discuss a little bit about what the inspiration was behind uh, your work on this? So I think a combination of things from an inspiration perspective. First off, Vuln data is really boring. Like fundamentally, like vulnerability management teams are faced with spreadsheets and they're, they're, there's not much information other than like a bunch of CVEs and a bunch of table-based mm -hmm. data. Mm -hmm. And so for me, even it's, it was genuine, genuine curiosity around like, I have these lists of things. There's some exploits. Exploitation is rel relatively new and in incorporating into vuln management programs as well and threat intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I was curious, like, how many volumes are actually impacted on this giant list from the NVD? Uh, how do people make sense of this data? There's these new concepts like EPSS and old concepts like CBSS. And how do they compare? And is that aligned with the Sysikev? And how do how does someone go about triaging this? And so I think generally speaking, what I've learned is that vulnerability management has been mostly neglected for the better has, you know, better part of the last decade. Mm -hmm. And and I think it's one of those things where drawing attention through data visualizations help help people understand how big the problem actually is. But it facilitates this amazing discussion around uh, vulnerabilities, vulnerability exploitation, mm -hmm. uh, and what organizations should be even considering doing as it relates to vulnerability management. Most of the research that I'm doing, I will be publishing a slide version that someone can take and pull anything out of mm -hmm. because I've been asked so many times at this point, like, do you have a slide of this? Do you have a slide of that? Mm -hmm. And really the intention with all this is great. Cool. I made it. I, you know, we love people to adopt it because it, it just creates different perspectives 
and helps enable security teams and practitioners and researchers to be able to talk about these complex topics uh, at different levels within an organization. Um, I think you brought with you today some examples of some of your most recent and most popular visualizations. So um, would you please uh, spend a minute or two just giving us a walkthrough of those? So this is one of the first examples of a chart that I created or a diagram. And mm-hmm. As we can see here, it kind of explains a few different things, and, and it resonated with people a lot. CISA, right, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, mm-hmm. has a list called the Known Exploitable Vulnerabilities List. Right. There's roughly 977 now, but at the time, there was 925. What I want to do is map CVSS scoring, which is the most common scoring system adopted and specifically the base score, right? There are other mm-hmm. variants you can use from a scoring system. Right. And what you can see here, just starting there is, oh, wow, well, these are all exploited, but they're not all critical vulnerabilities as it relates to this scoring system. And so it kind of highlights that there's an important aspect that you got to consider as now we have access to exploit data that maybe you know these scoring systems aren't necessarily the best place to start. Or maybe we need to look at other other different sources. And there's some things not factored in and you know to this, which I'll talk about in a sec. But specifically on the right, we see a newer scoring system that is also managed by FIRST, and it's an open standard, the exploit prediction scoring system. Mm-hmm. And this shows the probability of exploitation. And the measurements are much different between CVSS and EPSS. But what I was trying to convey and show here is that you know, EPSS shows a higher likelihood uh, of, you know, exploitation and, mm-hmm. and it could be used as an alternative to CVSS, but also that you shouldn't not look at something like existing exploit uh, mm-hmm. data that we know has confirmed exploitation. So this facilitates a lot of good discussion. The other thing that's not factored in with the base scores and EPSS probability is the amount of work effort for the scores I set. The EPSS score, I just set some random scores that kind of gave it the look that it has. But the reality is, is, is a, a score of 8% is the equivalent of CBSS 7 from an exploit coverage perspective. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that, you know, I'm working on in the data is explaining like EPSS is probably a better, you know, or is a, a, a better place to start as it relates to vulnerability prioritization because it incorporates exploitation evidence, right? And things mm-hmm. that are very, very high risk. So mm-hmm. CBSS metrics are used in EPSS for predicting probability. Mm-hmm. And so like th- these two are relying on each other in a lot of ways. This one specifically, I took the time though to categorize the CISA known exploitable vulnerabilities list mm-hmm. into different technology types. Now, this was my work in creating these technology types. <laughs> uh, so, you know, tried my best in, in the experience I have in the tech space to categorize these. Wow. So we have things like operating systems, productivity software, and networks. Mm-hmm. So I can click down and I can look at what wow. are the network devices on the Sysicav that are known to be exploitable. And we can see here things like, you know, Cisco, and then we can look at products. I'm using the categorizations from the Kev. We can look at, at Fortinet. Um, and some of the different impacted products, but just really interesting to be able to quickly, you know, take a, a, a spreadsheet and a bunch of tables that you can make sense of and see, oh, wow, operating systems are really impacted. My network devices, people should probably make sure they have really good patch process in place for these technology categories and technologies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and browsers is an example here. So, Really just point high level, like the data tells a story of where high level you should be spending some of your work effort and time and making sure that you are, have good patch process in place. What are your escalation processes when there's a new vulnerability or a critical vulnerability or a zero day in an operating system or a browser or your network? And so that's really, in, in part, people can come to a Nucleus on our blog and play around and interact with this in a little bit different way than they had before. So if people want to leverage or use the data visualizations 
uh, they're more than welcome to. If you want to uh, subscribe to be notified when future episodes drop and see earlier episodes, visit the Nuclear Security Channel on YouTube and uh, click the little notification button on there. And uh, we'll see you soon on the next Shortcuts. Thanks, Patrick. Hey, thanks for having me. Take care. Mm -hmm.